Alrighty, yo, what is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. DDG94, back with another reaction video today. We finna react there. The homie Phil Mo Cinema. Hey, man, shout out to the homie Phil Mo Cinema, man. Hey, man, make sure y'all run the likes up and the views up and the comments and all that good stuff up over on, on my boy Phil Mo Cinema channel. You already know they show that love over here. We're going to show that love right back. Shout out to the homie Phil Mo Cinema for sure, man. Make sure y'all support him, man. He definitely on the he definitely on the rise, dog. He definitely on the rise, especially with this one right here. This is Scarface. Yes, mine. Scarface, mine. <laughs> I bear the fucking cockroaches, man. You fucking with me? You fucking with the best, man. Most definitely, man. This is a classic, classic right here. A classic, 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 classic right here, man. For sure. Scarface, 1983, Al Pacino. Yeah, yeah. This most definitely a banger right here. Let's get it with the homie Phil Mo Cinema. Let's get it. I want to welcome y'all back to Filmo's Cinema, and today we reviewing Filmo's favorite movie. This might be the greatest movie of all time, and I'm not here to debate, and just like the title suggests, this is the most influential movie to black culture, period. And I'll explain why I said that later, but y'all, I love this movie so much, I'm gonna name my child Tony Montana, no matter the gender, and I ain't bullshit neither. Also, before we get into it, check out my movie Joyland 2019 on Tubi Prime Pluto, Apple TV, YouTube, and more. Y'all just Google that. Now I want to get straight into it because this movie damn near three hours long. So without further ado, Scarface, directed by Brian De Palma. We open on this text giving us a little historical backdrop and through the opening credits we see what looks to be real footage of the Mario boat lifts from the 1980s. Fast forward and we get the GOAT himself, Tony Montana. Al Pacino is my favorite actor by the way, but Montana is being questioned by these government officials and we learn a lot about Tony in this opening scene. The guys like uh, Hoffie Bogart, they sky me. That, that me to talk. And just a quick film history lesson, Humphrey Bogart and James Cadden were previous tough guys in American cinema. They was like the poster boys for masculinity. And Tony is kind of giving you a hint at how his mind works. But these men continue to have my boy fucked up, asking him these crazy ass questions and shit. You ever been in jail, Tony? What? What about homosexuality? What? You like men, huh? You out of order. They then <laughs> see he with the game when they see his tech and just automatically want to send my boy away. But he tried to tell him off before he leave. Wanna work eight, ten fucking hours? You own nothing? You got nothing? White man like, nah, get this nigga up out of here. His ugly ass ain't have to do my boy like that. And your ass too. Look how the big ass nose cast a shadow on this broad ass jeans. Now <laughs> Montana is on his hot ass bus with his right hand man, Manny. And they are headed to this camp that's right on the side of the highway. Scarf face balling on these niggas but y'all see what kind of defense these niggas playing oh he got a mean jump shot though come on man trash man and then put him on the loop so they can get a green card and shit and they whack this political dude from cuba they didn't get a job at this restaurant but montana ain't really feeling it but my boy is still ambitious nevertheless look at those titties they didn't meet the goofers that put them on the lip, but Montana ain't really picking up what they trying to put down. What's with this dishwasher, chick? Oh, Cadet to hit from banger cheaper, dude. 50 bucks. Man, he got Tony fucked up. Little ugly ass boy. Top dancing frog looking ass boy. Why you ain't do that then, Nick? Bro, I fire you once upon a time and Cuba looking ass so. Mm -hmm. Guacamole! Yeah, but chill, but chill. We got the dope coming in, Nick. They didn't get the idea to send them on another mission in Vice City. See what you got going on? You trying to get your bands up? You ever sold dope before? Hell no. Nah. 
They say the hell with this dishwashing shit and they take Omar's offer. But peep this, they get to the lick and buddy acting real suspicious, asking Tony all these silly ass questions. Where are you from, Tony? What the fuck difference does it make where I'm from? Whole time this Frankenstein head bitch got a damn cannon under the pillow. It was a setup and man out here trying to holler at hoes. One of Scarface boys get brutally unalive with a chainsaw. They finna get Tony next. Hey, got a cicatriz. Fuck you. But Manny Goof ass finally come through causing them to get the ups. Montana so pissed he gun old boy down in the middle of the street in front of everybody. After this they gonna meet the big dog Frank and he goofing. <laughs> But Montana make a good impression on old Frank. He got old Omar hating on him already. Montana then sees Frank's girl, Elvira, for the first time. He can't keep his eyes off of her. I don't know what he's seeing her, cause she a stone cold bitch that say crazy shit. If anyone ever wanted to assassinate you, you wouldn't be too hard to find. Who the hell would want to kill me? <laughs> they then go to the Malibu. Y'all know that club from Vice City. Frank being obnoxious, annoying everybody, but he giving Montana the game. Shawty gets so annoyed, she like, damn this, and get up and wanna dance. But she asked Tony, and he like, hell yeah. Tony trying to shoot his shot. She ain't feeling it though. Manny trying to warn Tony by trying to boss his old lady, but Tony like, fuck Frank goof ass. So it's now three months later, and our heroes done got some new drip and starting to feel they self a little bit. Tony is getting more philosophical. This sounds like a great big pussy. Wait to get fucked. Up. Then you see Manny, he trying to show Tony what the hell the ladies like. Hey, shit. yo. You know how you pick up chicks in this country? <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to put his pimp into the test, but failed miserably. Look at that. They go scoop Elvia, but she not fucking with the whip. In the next scene, Tony at the dealership trying to impress Elvira. He flexing hard, too. Nigga like, yeah, man, I need them fog lights for the space bugs when I ride through the galaxy. But Tony funny as hell, though. This is why this character's so good. And most gangster movies, they act like a nigga can't smile and joke. But it's good to see these traits from Tony. It makes him a well-rounded character. Next, we get this Vertigo shot, named after the Alfred Hitchcock movie Vertigo. But I think it is used because this is the first time we see Elvin and Tony engage in the use of yayo. He gets so geek, he try to kiss her. But slowly but surely, she getting more interested. Scarface then go visit his mother. Y'all just look at the sky man in the background. Shout out to the cinematographer on this movie, man. But he reunited with his little sister, Gina, who he really, really loves. I'm talking about really loves. He trying to get his mama some money, but she refused, flip out, and then kick him out the house, period. Tony and Gina go outside, and she apologize for her mama action. He give her some money though But Manny called her beautiful And realized this nigga do not play by his sister Montana and the gargoyle then go to Columbia to meet the plug That's when we meet Sosa The suave, smooth drug kingpin Where Chief Keep nickname come from And you can look at Sosa and tell he ain't the man to be fucked with Nigga got on a zipper jacket that got buttons at the top They talking business though And Omar keep getting mad Cause Tony keep taking control of the conversation Now I want y'all to pay close attention to Shay right here and it's the first time i ever paid attention to this out of the thousand times i done seen this movie and notice his position behind montana too tony don't even notice him shay's gonna pop back up later in a major way though the meeting is then interrupted by this long chin face ass man him and sosa get on the phone and shit getting intense between omar and tony started doing this fucking business so shut the fuck Frank up tony pissing him the fuck off y'all peep tony eating the lemon he acting poor by doing this because you ain't supposed to eat the lemon see pete Omar, but Sosa convinced Omar to go with Shades now. Why don't you leave your friend here? Hell no, man. What the Which is scary itself. Cause what the hell y'all want? And y'all peep Shades here. He always behind a bitch. And you never see his eyes. They end up deleting Omar ass. And Sosa and Tony end up talking. And Tony end up closing a deal with Sosa. But Sosa tell him some mean shit. Tell you one time. What? Frank ain't too happy when Tony come back. <laughs> Tony is getting too big for his britches, as they say. Fuck Gaspar Gomez! And hey, fuck the Diaz! Yes, fuck the Diaz! Yes, fuck him fuck him on. On. I burn those fucking cultures! Frank tried to tell Tony some fuck real shit, shit though. Fuck your shit, Tony! Friend, so sad. Let me tell you something about that. Talk your shit, Tony! Talk your shit, nigga! Speak your speech, nigga! Speak your speech, nigga! Speak your speech! <laughs> Respawn cocksucker. He is a snake. That's what he is. The guys who last in this business, the guys who fly straight, low key, quiet, but the guys who want it all. 
they don't last. After this, Tony finally break through to Elvin, and she finally pick up what he putting down. Montana then go to the Malibu and see Gina there, which pisses him off. <laughs> He then get confronted by this undercover cop. I think his name is Mel though. Then he spots Elvin and cop a squat next to him. But Frank walk his ass up there. But Tony chomp him off real quick, which upsets Frank. Tony then spots Gina and her and old boy getting a little frisky. Lip all up here. Ooh, no, 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 nah, we good, we good, baby. We straight. I'm telling you, I don't really look sick, sad, freak <laughs> He ended up slapping her and walking out that bitch. Later that night, these two serious looking Chicos laying on Tony. Meanwhile, Manny taking Gina home and she slick shoot her shot. Manny seemed like he ain't going for it though, but y'all make note of this. Back at the club, we get this damn hump the dump the shit prancing around and the hitters make their move on Tony. <laughs> He end up getting out of there and taking them out. Tony being the street smart nigga that he is, goes to one of Frank's boys and tell him to call Frank exactly at 3 a.m. Yeah. What you gonna say? We fucked up, he got away. Which gonna lead us into our next scene, which is one of my favorite scenes of the movie, if not my favorite scene. They go in Frank's office in front of this fire's background and wait exactly till three when Frank gets the call. Hello, hey Frank, you piece of shit. Frank go out like a sucker, begging Tony for his life. Get him! Get him! Get him! No! He get Manny to blow him down though. Every dog has to stay. That bitch your neck. Then Tony himself <laughs> deletes Mel Bernstein. What about Ernie? Want a job, Ernie? I know he was like, oh god damn. He was finna shit a brick. He then goes wake Elvie up, letting her know that Frank is finished. And as she goes about packing her things, Tony just stares out at the sky. <laughs> We then open on what I like to call the rise of Tony Montana in this real 80s type montage. These niggas getting so much money, the bank getting tired of seeing these niggas. And the bank tell Tony they can't launder his money anymore. But Manny trying to put him on this Jewish banker, which gonna come back to bite him in the ass. Tony starting to let the money go to his head though. Let the ladies more than you let the money. I'm your partner, okay? Tony end up following Manny up with the side of bond thing and gets busted. He get out and talk with his lawyer and find out he might have to do some fucking time. There's a meeting in Colombia with Sosa and some other powerful men. And y'all Pete Shades in the back. This nigga don't move not one time. Look. But Sosa want Tony to whack this journalist that's exposing his operation. But I need names. Mark West Jackson? Yes, bro. Man, man, them don't be on no gangster shit. All they do is credit card fraud. Them little fishes. I didn't know you talking about everything they're looking for. But remember his long face ass? Sosa want Tony to take him, but he don't speak no English. We didn't get to my other favorite scene of the movie. Can't even have a fucking little baby with her. Tony and this bitch tweaking. She end up leaving, and a geeked up and drunk Tony end up telling all these high society folks a piece of his damn mind. So night night to the the bad guy, guy, man. Tony is slowly unraveling people. See, she wanted diamonds and gold. You should have got an ugly bitch with a beautiful soul. We are now in New York, and Operation Get the Snitches in full effect. Tony is beginning to overindulge with the yayo, and he discovers the snitches with a wife and kid. Now he don't want to go through with it. No more. Think I killed two kids and a woman? He didn't blow butter chin all over the car. He calling around for Manny and he ain't nowhere to be fine. Plus, Elvie ain't calling. I told you a long time I'm ago, you fucking little, little monkey, monkey, not to fuck, fuck with me. What hey, hey, <laughs> the fuck you think you are? <laughs> it was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Mama Montana mad, missing Gina. Ever since you came back, she's been getting this way. And we get to perhaps the lowest point of the movie, where yep. Tony goes to a huge house, only to find out man had been laying up with Gina. Tony has a look of immediate regret as he stares forward blankly. Gina is distraught when they make it back to Tony's. And now he getting high as ever. I guess to numb the pain, but Sosa here to starting to infiltrate and these niggas ain't come to play. This nigga Sosa sent the whole army up this bitch. Gina crazy ass come in and start shooting at Tony. And she hit him. Gina then get shot, but Tony get rid of him quick. We then proceed to get one of the most imitated and influential endings ever in the history of cinema. And probably the most famous quote in cinema too. To my little Tony proceeds to shoot it out with Sosa's hit squad. Man, Frank warned your ass how Sosa was coming. 
He is a snake. That's what he is. You turn back on him, you stick it in. But couldn't nobody tell you shit? You thought you was so damn smooth. Look at you now. But Tony proves to be hard to kill because he take out about 30 of these niggas. But it's like the henchmen just keep respawning. It's like a damn Call of Duty game or something. That goddamn shades don't play, do he? This nigga the real savage in the movie, cause my boy don't do no talking. And he credited as the skull in the credits, by the way. But I wonder why they call this nigga the skull. He sound like a damn Marvel villain or something. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't let this nigga walk behind me for shit. But at some point, Tony just say fuck the gun and just start taking the bullets. As some would say, like a real G. Or just damn stupid. And I love how they pay homage to the original Scarface. They then proceed to dedicate the film to Howard Hawks and Ben Hecht, who are the director and writer of the original 1932 Scarface. This shit really the greatest movie ever, man. And man, I know that damn Sosa was pissed. Man. Man, 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 I swear I could watch this movie a hundred thousand times and never get tired of it. Scarface is a perfect movie from the cinematography to the wardrobe to the characters to the plot. Just everything about this movie is good. Pacino brings a lot to the performance as Tony Montana. Not only is he charismatic, but he is a well-rounded character. In some scenes, he is a straight up savage, like this one when he gun old boy down in the middle of the street while dressed like he can bowl a mean strike. And in other scenes, we see that he is capable of caring and showing emotion. Hell, he even funny at times. He is a very complex character. This, in my opinion, is the best performance of his career. Now, Scarface wasn't always upheld as the masterpiece that is known as the day. Critics panned the film upon its release and it bombed at the box office during this theatrical run. Next day, the critics basically said that it was the worst film of all time. The box office level, Scarface never made a dime. They were saying it was too vulgar and too violent. And can y'all believe not one Academy Award nomination? But unlike most movies that flopped, Scarface got a second life when the movie started playing at cheap theaters and when it was released on VHS. Latinos and Blacks resurrected the film and gave it a new appreciation for generations to come. And I told y'all, I was gonna explain why I said this movie was the most influential movie to black culture. I can't think of another film that has been referenced in black film and music as much as Scarface. I'ma just give y'all a few examples. Uh, the world is mine. And the brothers do now. Bumba clap me. Come, come on. I murder people for fun. Things really got hot in Harlem when Scarface came to town. It's like niggas love seeing a poor ass Cuban just blow up to be the man. I slap people for fun. That's what I do, I don't man. Mind. You wanna no, play me? Huh? When you go to hell, make sure you say hi to friend. You okay? Okay, I will break your fucking balls all over this fucking time. And there are a lot more examples I could list, but y'all get the picture. As I stated earlier, hip hop culture brought a new appreciation to the film. Mid '80s, the film started getting picked up by the hip hop generation. It had a big, big impact. But I think a lot of niggas in general took the wrong message from the movie. They saw how Tony fearlessly came up from the bottom to attain the world, but they somehow forgot how he lost control and spiraled downward only to go out violently. Scarface became a kind of guidebook to ghetto life. This movie is a cautionary tale. It's not to be glamorized at all. As a not matter of fact, if you go back and you really watch the movie, you'll see that Tony really wasn't at the top for a long period of time. During the second half, Montana starts to get deeper into his addiction and alienates the people that he loves because of his ego. Like when he killed Manny, he obviously regretted that shit, but it was too late by then. But all kind of shit would be inspired by this movie. I think the wildest shit I seen was an elementary school play in which children was playing the main characters. I got a funny joke for a wife. You son of a bee! I was so polluted. I can't fudging little Yeah, shit, wow, right? But it don't get no better than this, ladies and gentlemen. Not the kids. Come on, dog. Come on, man. We can't be doing this, man. 
Hey yo, what the fuck? Come on now, dawg. Come on, man. I don't care if a movie gets made a hundred years from now, it ain't nothing that gonna be better than Scarface. And y'all know I usually rate movies, but this shit's so good, I just can't rate it. It's one you just gonna have to see and appreciate for all its greatness, for real, for real. But man, hats off to Al Pacino, Brian De Palma, Oliver Stone, and everybody else that had a hand in making this masterpiece. So y'all make sure y'all go watch Scarface, and don't forget to watch Joyland 2019, available on Tubi, Prime, Pluto TV, TV, YouTube, Apple TV, and more. Just Google Joyland 2019. And as always, thank y'all for tuning in. Make sure y'all keep liking and subscribing. I got more dope content coming, so y'all stay tuned. Thank y'all for watching, and say good night to the bad guy. Alrighty, man. Shout out to the homie Filmo Cinema, man, for coming through with the motherfucking banger. Right? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. With the motherfucking banger right here man for real though <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely, man. Shout out to the homie Phil Most Cinema, man, for coming through with that banger right here. Most definitely, man. And like he said, man, this movie was not to be glorified. It was a cautionary tale that you're supposed to learn something from. But niggas gonna be niggas and gonna do nigga shit. <laughs> Sadly. Get up! But anywho. That's just going to about do it for this one, man. Make sure y'all go subscribe to Filmo Cinema. Make sure y'all run the comments up and likes up, the subscribers up, and all that good stuff over there, man. Go support. Share this video if you got to, man. Do whatever you got to do to help the homie Filmo Cinema, man. You def definitely should be top. Should be out here, you know what I'm saying, with the top tier. Uh, with the top tier. Uh, uh content that he puts out so yeah man make sure y'all go uh support the homie man you already know they show that love i'm here we're gonna show that love right back most definitely and i will see you all in the next video man till then peace out